Okay, Time Functions. It's a, one of the books from the series of Gary Shafee Patterns. And this is what I'm working on with my students online, my live online lesson site. And my, I'm sharing with them or telling them my approach and what's prerequisite in order to play this. So what I've done, I take the section on the fat back. Now, it's labeled fat back, but it's not really a fat back. What I think he was trying to say was on the counts of two and the counts of four, which will be consistent, uh, it's a fatter sound, meaning a louder sound. Okay, now, what I've done, I do this in stages. One-dimensional, two-dimensional, three-dimensional, and four-dimensional. And the first dimensional, uh, it's a, actually a prerequisite. You need to understand how to read the figure in order to play. So what I've done, I wrote out some sections uh, from, um, if you have the book, it's pages, it starts on page 12, and it's sections 23, 24, 25, etc., up to, I believe, 37. Now, I'll probably do uh, what this, with this uh, video, <coughs> maybe four or five sections, like 23, 24, 25, and 26. They're on page 12. Okay? He presents this as two-dimensional. And when I say two-dimensional, he's using two different limbs. He's using the bass drum and the snare drum. That's two-dimensional. Same figure, two-dimensional. Now, three-dimensional, I would say I would use my bass drum, my snare drum, and my, say, uh, oh, excuse me, my hi-hat uh, with the right hand. Or if I make it four-dimensional, I'll play my bass drum, my snare, uh, my snare drum, my hi-hat, and my ride cymbal. So there's four, four different things going on. I consider that four-dimensional. So what I've done... I've taken page 12, 13, and 14, and wrote them out in sections as one-dimensional. So what I'm going to do, if you want the PDF sheets, I will leave my email at the uh, bottom of the video. Email me, and I will send them to you. Okay? It's a, it, it, to me, it, it works. It's a good approach, and it's a necessity. You need to understand how to read in order to get the full value of the book. You know, a lot of guys, are, they have this ability or talent that they hear it and play it. You ask them to explain it, they don't know what to explain. You say, play the next one. They can't play it or explain it until they actually hear it. But now, you know, you buy a book, it's there. There's nobody say here, this is how it sounds, now play it. So it's an asset to know how to read. Now, this is very basic reading. It's all in 4-4. And what I've done with 23 is I, I put the, the uh, uh, repeat signs on as one measure. It's written in 2, 4, 1, 2. So with the repeat, I made it 3, 4. So the first one, if you look at the, the PDF sheet, uh, number 23, <coughs> the first line, uh, measure number 1, is four quarter notes. Now, when I do this, I do a counting system. I'm not trying to prove anything to no one or perform anything. I'm teaching and explaining. What I'm doing here is counting in 16th note formation. My 16th note formation counting, like everybody else should be, is 1E e and uh, 2E and uh, 3E and 4E uh, e and... Uh. <coughs> now, I'm going to play the first measure, just simple quarter notes. But now when I hit the one surface, we're not into any big time technical issues here, but I try to maintain an equal sound on both hands, and I am using alternate strokes. So now I'm on 23, and I'm going to do the first measure, four quarter notes, and I'm counting sixteenths. One, E, and a, two, E, and a, three, E, and a, four, E, and a. Simple pattern. Now we go to the second measure, and you have a quarter note again, a sixteenth and a dotted eighth note. Now, for those who don't know uh, what a dot does to a note, let me explain. A dot placed after a note, 
increases the value of the note by one half the original value. Now you take an eighth note in 4-4 four, four, or any place, an eighth note is equal to 2 sixteenths. If you have a dotted eighth note, it's equal to how many? 3. The value is 2. The dot increases the value by one half of this, which would make it 3 notes, 3 sixteenths. So now, I have a sixteenth note and a dotted eighth note. I'm going to play the measure. Count it very slow. One, E, and a, two, E, and a, three, E, and a, four, E, and a. So that takes care of the first two measures. The, the third measure gets a little easier. It's quarter notes and eighth notes. Okay, the third measure, one, E, and a, two, E, and a, three, E, and a, four, E, and Okay, now, fourth measure, again, you have a dotted eighth note. So you take what you learn, dotted eighth note, equals three sixteenths. So the first downbeat is just a quarter note, it's one. The second is a dotted eighth note, that equals three sixteenths. So it falls on two. Two, E, and da, to complete the, the uh, four notes inside of the uh, grouping of four. So I have the, the uh, fourth measure as one E and the, two E and the, three E and, four E and the. Now, this might sound like, oh man, that's not what I want to do. I want to groove. I want to play this on the drum set. If you don't know how to read, you're going to have a hard time on the drum set. You want to do this. You want to approach this where you go forward instead of remaining. Uh, or It's a train wreck when you play it. You need to understand what's occurring. Now, that's the first line of section 23. I'm going to do the sec second line, section of 23. Okay? It's a quarter note, two sixteenths, and an eighth. It's one, E, and, a, uh, two, E, and, a, uh, three, E, and, a, uh, four, E, and, a. Uh. Second measure, line two. Okay? You have a quarter note, which is simple, one. E and the. Now on the second downbeat, you have a sixteenth note, an eighth note, and a sixteenth note. Now you have to do the math here. You, uh, the second downbeat is a sixteenth note. Two. Then you have an eighth note, which is going to fall E and and then the. So I do one and two. One E and a. Uh, two E and the. Three. E and the four E and the. Okay. Third measure. All right, line two. Quarter note, eighth note, two sixteenths, so on and so forth. It's very difficult if you don't have the PDF. So if you get the PDF, e you know, email me and I will send you the PDF. All right, the third measure, which is one E and a. Uh, Two E and a uh, three E and a uh, four E and a. Uh. Okay, fourth and last measure of the section. Quarter note and four sixteenths. Quarter note and four sixteenths. Here we go. One E and a uh, two E and a uh, three E and a uh, four E and a. Uh. Now I'm I'm trying my best to explain the math of this particular of the particular section. If you know the math, I broke it down measure by measure. Now what I'm going to do is play 23, section 23, from the beginning to the end. I'm not going to do any repeats. I'm just going to end it. All right, it's one, two, three, four. It's eight measure phrase. Here I go. One, E, play, boom. One, E, and, uh, two, E, and, a uh, three E and a uh, four E and a uh, one E and a uh, two E and the uh, sorry my mistake I apologize I'm just looking at the computer I shouldn't do that I'm gonna do it again I'm not gonna remake the video so I'm gonna do twenty three here we go one E play boom one E and a uh, two E and a uh, three E and a uh, Four E and a uh, one E and a uh, two E and a uh, three E and a uh, four E and a uh, one E 
and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and the three e and the four e and the one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and the three e and the four e one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a sorry about the mistake okay it happens it happens so I re, uh, I'm trying to make it right. I'm not going to remake the video. So I started at the beginning and went through it. I didn't alternate all, all the time. I used maybe just my right hand or maybe my left hand. And that's for, uh, for, uh, for videoing because I have the camera there, the computer there, and the computer screen up here. And I'm reading. And I'm looking at everything. And I get not confused, but I mo lost my place, which is bad. And I apologize for that. Now, like I said, that's number 23. If you want, I said, I will send you the, the uh, PDF. I'm only going to make number 23 and 24 for this lesson. There's going to be a series of videos coming until I finish this particular one-dimensional approach. When I finish the one-dimensional approach, I will take the two-dimensional and explain it. And you'll see why you need to really understand the math and the reading. Then I'll go to the three-dimensional and then to a four-dimensional. All right, this is a drum pad application. The two-dimensional will be on a drum set, three-dimensional, four-dimensional on the drum set. Okay, so that takes care of section number 23. All right, now I'm going to go to section 24, and that's actually page 12 of uh, the pattern series, Gary Shafee, uh, Time Functions. Page 12, number 24. And here we go with the dot again. A lot of people have a problem with that, and I don't know why. It's just it's the math. If you look at 24, the first note is a 16th note, and the next note after that is an eighth, a dotted eighth note, which equals three sixteenths. So if I add the value of the rest in the notes, I get four sixteenths, which is equal to one quarter. It's the math. Okay, so 24, the first measure, nice and slow. One E play. One. E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a second measure. Again, the one and three is going to be re remaining the same here, so you get used to that dot. Sixteenth note rest in the dotted eighth. Second measure. One. Here we go. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Okay, third measure, one E boom, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. All right, the next measure, the fourth measure, one E and a two E and the three E and the four E and the. Ah, you're infested with the dots there, so you better know the value and the math there, and I'm going to explain it a little bit. On the fourth measure, okay, the first downbeat is a 16th note rest. The second note is an eighth, a dotted eighth note. If you add all that up, it equals four sixteenths, which equals the quarter note. But now the, the rest takes, takes the first sixteenth, which is, which is one. Now I have a dotted eighth note, which takes the three sixteenths, E and the. Again, first downbeat. One, E, and the. Okay? Third, third uh, second downbeat, you have a dotted eighth note, which equals three sixteenths. And you have a sixteenth note, which added up equals four sixteenths. So line 24, measure number four. One, all right, here we go. One, E, and a, uh, two, E, and the, three, E, and the four E and the. Okay, 14 second line. I mean, 24 second line. Excuse me. 
Here we go. Sixteenth note. Rest and a dotted eighth note again. Same value. One, E, and the. Two sixteenths and an eighth. Two, E, and the. Sixteenth note rest and a dotted eighth note. Three, E, and the. Four, E, and the. Second measure, line 22nd, 24. Dotted eighth note, uh, I mean 16th note rest and a dotted eighth note. One, E, and a. Two, E, and the. Three, E, and the. Four, E, and the. Okay, third measure, 24. One, E, and the. Two, E, and the. Three, E, and the. Four, E, and the. Okay, 24, last measure. One, E, play, boom. One, E, and a. Two, E, and a. Three, E, and a. Four, E, and a. Now, all this is, is two dimension. I mean, one dimension, excuse me. At section 23 and 24 from Gary Shafee's book, his pattern series, Time Functions. This is my approach when I teach these particular sections. And I, like I said before, I do one-dimensional, two, three, four-dimensional. Now, this is, I'm going to continue with this with another video that's going to take it to the second dimension. And, and you'll have it labeled from this video. I'm going to do 24 and, tw I mean, 23 and 24 two-dimensional. And then after that, I'll do three-dimensional and four-dimensional. It's just, it's just an approach, and it really works. You have to get the foundation. You have to understand how to read for the, you to get the benefit out of this. At first, <clears throat> it might be a little difficult, but the more you're with reading, it actually becomes easier because you become more familiar with the math. So again, I'm going to say, uh, if you want the video, I mean the uh, PDFs, I'm going to give you one. I'm going to give you, I'll give you them all to you. Uh, and if you follow the series, uh, just, I'll, I'll leave my email. Just email me and uh, I'll send you the, the uh, PDFs. Now, this is how I teach on my website, my MattPatellaLiveLessons.com. And I also incorporate not only just the Gary Shafee book, but I label the lesson as Shafee versus stone, or meat stone, rather. And I use, I incorporate this kind of a approach with the stick control book. I eliminate some things and make it one-dimensional, then two-dimensional, three-dimensional, four-dimensional. Because if you realize on uh, the brilliance of George Lawrence Stone, <coughs> from 1 to 72, you have all kinds of foot patterns. Or if you... Uh, or reading patterns, patterns of one-dimensional, two-dimensional foot patterns with uh, the snare drum. And three-dimensional, again, three three voices, four-dimensional, four voices. So I hope you, you follow the series. And like I said, I'm going to leave my email. And I'm going to have to close it up because I have a scheduled lesson now. And I will be back with the two-dimensional on 23 and 24. Okay, gentlemen, have a good day. I hope this helps. Any questions, just give me a holler.